So thank you, uh, Shimin. Can you see my slide? Yeah, works great. Okay. Uh, okay. So, uh, firstly, uh, I, I want to express my gratitude for this opportunity uh, to talk about some of, of our works that has been done in the past one, one or two years. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the interfacial nanoengineering of concrete. So as we all know that concrete is a, a very complex materials, right? We, in terms of the material constituents, there are a lot of, a lot of materials. And nowadays, more and more supplementary cementitious materials are added into the concrete, and as well as the development of advanced concrete, even makes the you know the materials uh, that are used in concrete even more complex. Uh, oh, well, so uh, you know, uh, based on the basic mechanisms for the cement hydration, it is it essentially uh, uh, dissolution followed by precipitation. So the uh, cement hydration product is uh, also very complex. It contains AFM, AFM, AFT, CSH, at, multi uh, at very different scales, right? So the complexity of, the, of this material is also can be manufactured at, at uh, from very small scale to very big, big scales, right? So uh, we can see that in each scales there are there are different different phases and different phases there will be some interface of boundaries. So from this for, for, so from this standpoint, I think saying concrete can be considered as interface. Okay. So this is the first message that I want to deliver. Concrete itself, it is, it, it concrete, it uh, is a is interface. So if concrete interface, it just means that we we might be we can able to uh, op, uh, uh, modify the concrete's performance from the interface modification, right? So broadly speaking, the, the interface that in the uh, concrete can be divided into several categories, or de just depending on your, 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 your angle, right? So in my own perspectives, there are here, I listed several uh, very most typical uh, interface, a similar, similar interface, similar aggregate interface, and it's between cement and fibers as well as the interface between cement and the uh, uh, supplementary cementitious materials, right? Uh, for instance, for the cement cement uh, interface, it is just uh, is, uh, the key question is about how the cement grains are bound, bound to each other, and uh, which is uh, very important to uh, the phenomenon of setting and hardening, right? And, uh, as for the cement aggregate uh, uh, interface, I think uh, the, the mo most prominent problem in such uh, interface is ITZ, right? Which is a very hot topic in the last, you know, in the 80s, in the last century. Um, and for the cement the fibers uh, interface, so thanks for the development of a cement of uh, EC and uh, UHPC, right? The, this interface also play a key role for so concrete, right? And for the SCM and cement uh, interface, uh, it's uh, regarding is mainly regarding the the activity of the SCM. Uh, so it's also it's a it's a very important question uh, regarding the usage of SCM in 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 concrete. Right. So today, because of time, mainly talk about the cement aggregate interface. Okay. So here we have interface. Right. So so if we if we uh you know if we want to really modify this interface, right. So zero there are several. So uh, let, let, let us look at this image. Uh, the, the blue image, the blue color, I just indicated the paste, right? The gray color, you just indicated the aggregate. So if we want to put something out of this interface, as I indicated by yellow colors, it just means that this, this yellow color materials can separate gate from the matrix of uh, paste physically. Right. So 
So if we're doing this, so there's how, why we do this, there are several several advantages. I would. The first advantage is that if we if we separate this two stuff physically, we can prevent, you know, the the attacking by the alkali to the aggregate. Right? This is, that is a first application. Right? The second application is that if we can, you know, if we, we can uh, put the something at this interface, it just means that we can seal. Uh, the you know phase transition materials that are embedded in the porous aggregate and prevent its uh, its uh, you know uh, it's it's leaking. Right? So here this is a two main uh, potential applications for for such you know interface engineering. So the second question is how how can we modify this uh, interface? Um, uh, we, we, uh, in my lab, we basically we use nanomaterials. So why we use nanomaterials? I think the essential uh, reason is that nanomaterials has very high, very high specific uh, surface areas, uh, uh, typically several orders of higher than that of the aggregate. So that means we can use we can only use a very little amount of uh, uh, nanomaterials to fully cover the surface of the aggregate. So it, that will be very efficient, right? And uh, the second question that we use nanomaterials, in our case, we're using graphene oxide, is that uh, graphene oxide is basically two-dimensional materials, uh, you know, all, which means also means that almost all the atoms in the graphene oxide are exposed to, uh, to the environment, right? So in terms of the uh, atom usage uh, efficiency, for such interface modification, I think uh, graphene oxide or other net 2D nanomaterials is just the best materials. Okay, so this is why and how we want to modify a similar aggregate interface by graphene oxide. Okay, and uh, we design a lot of, uh, you know, I think a very interesting uh, uh, experiments. And uh, today I will just show one or two. Um, First example that I want to show you that is that we want to we uh, how how we modify how we modify the this interface by graphene oxide and the, the first images that I show I mainly show the you know the the the, the procedures that we 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 realize the coding of aggregate by graphene oxide in a very efficient way. Okay, you can see, the, you know, the, the, the top right uh, images that I shows uh, several, uh, you know, glass bottles. You can see the first two bottles. That is before and after the dropping of, uh, of a fine aggregate in the solution of graphene oxide. You can see the difference of the colors just indicated that a graphene is an aggregate, uh, a fine aggregate can really absorb you know, absorb, uh, you know, significant, significant amount of graphene oxide on its surface. And in the, in the last bottle, uh, gas bottle uh, in the uh, top right image that we, sh we in that, that image, we just uh, drop the, the aggregate coated with graphene oxide in, back into, you know, in water. We can see the water is still very clear and transparent, just indicating that, uh, uh, the graphene oxide can just really coat the uh, the aggregate aggregate tightly, right? And in the right in the right bottom uh, SEM EM image, you can see that uh, uh, just a very thin and a smooth graphene oxide are tightly coated on the graphene surface uh, on the aggregate conformally. Okay, so you can see a lot of small wrinkles. And then we further use, uh, you know, we, we characterize uh, as, uh, how the graphene oxide are coated on the, on the surface of the aggregate. Uh, what's the dynamics of this, uh, this uh, you know, this process? Okay, this is just a very, very basic uh, experiments. And uh, we, are, we further use, uh, you know, Raman, Raman specs chopping and as, as well as uh, combined with SCM to test to, to measure uh, the coverage of the of the 
uh, of the aggregate with the graphene oxide. And the, the, data, the experiment results show that about the 70% of the surface area of, of the aggregate have covered well graphene oxide. Uh, and, and with such coding, uh, we we just added the we just use this uh, you know use the, I would say this use this advanced fine aggregate to prepare the motor and 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 test the the properties of the motor and we can see that both the seven or the seven day three day uh, seven three day seven day and eight and the twenty eight days perform of the strength uh, 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 okay, is uh, it's uh, much higher control control sample, right? And uh, 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 and uh, more importantly is that we can see that the the porosity also greatly decrease, uh, you know, which means that for the long term performance of this materials can be also can be well improved, right? And because uh, in our in this case, the graphene oxide is coated on the surface of aggregate, so so uh, it probably the existence of the, of the of the graphene oxide can improve the 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 property the microstructures of the interface, right? The ITZ. So we use uh, the backscattering method to to check the the, the porosity locally at the interface. And uh, uh, it shows that uh, you know the interface is indeed well improved, both in terms of the uh, in terms of the micro of the structure as well as the chemical you know constituents. Uh, so this is a uh, this is our so this is uh, our my first example. I just want to show that uh, the by coding the aggregate with the graphene oxide, we can really uh, change the properties of the interface locally in, in a very efficient way. Uh, and this paper uh, was pub was uh, submitted, you know, about a long, you know, eight, eight months ago, still under reviewing. Uh, I, I think I still have several minutes. Uh, to tell a little bit about my second story about the semen semen interface. Uh, this is about, uh, uh, actually, this is about the CD effects of semen of nanomaterials. And uh, in a lot of publications, uh, uh, you know, it will, uh, it will be uh, the effects of nanomaterials uh, 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 pointed out can be, you know, uh, act as you know uh, the uh, the seed at seed for the semen hydration, so which means the semen hydration product were formed around the, those nano added nano particles you know spontaneously. So, but but unfortunately, as far as I know, there's still no direct evidence to prove that. Okay, in the in the in the right three images, uh, I show that. Uh, I'm sorry. Four minutes. Okay, four minutes. Okay, thank you. So, uh, in in the in the in the in the right images, I show there are still two possibilities. Uh, the first possibility is that indeed the nanoparticles can be acted as CD effects, right? As I mentioned, but it's still it's still uh, another possibility is that uh, 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 you know, uh, upon the growth of the uh, of the semen uh, growth of the semen uh, pro hydrogen product uh, on, that uh, formed on the uh, semen grains, the nanoparticles can be embedded, 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 you know, naturally, right? So, the I think the key uh, the key to, uh, to 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 figure out this uh, the true reason is to separate the solution from the from the uh, similar grains so uh, based on this analysis we just uh, use uh, something called a carbon nanotube forest a kind of carbon nanotube sponge to as a platform to investigate the whether or not the nanomaterials can be acted as CD effect we just basically we just put the slurries of c 3 s on the top of the of the carbon carbon nanotube sponges and at that in, at the interface between the sponge and the slurry, uh, the only the pore solution can filtrate it into the uh, sponge, 
uh, because of the size and uh, because the size because the pore size in the in the in the uh, sponge is about 50 nanometers uh, which is you know two, almost two orders of higher than the uh, than the size of the of the similar grains so the similar grains cannot penetrate into the sponge but only the pore solution can penetrate inside right so based on this we can just uh, we successfully uh, separate the pore solution from the uh, 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 from the C3S. So it turns out that we there's a, the, all the nanomaterials are most are almost naked without any any uh, you know similar hydration product naturally formed around this, those carbon nanotubes. So, so this uh, this uh, results provide direct evidence that graphene that carbon nanotubes just well is uh, you know, cannot provide any seed effects for the cement hydration. Okay, so this is something work, some some work that regarding the the interface between carbon nanotube and the cement and the cement grains. Uh, so yeah, so this is uh, the two stories that uh, you know targeting uh, you know talk which is about uh, you know the interface that in, in concrete. So uh, the two works is, uh, uh, was done by my two of my PhD students, Lu Dong and uh, Wang Xiaonan. And I also would thank the support, the continuous support from uh, Professor Xiamin Shi as well as uh, uh, Professor O. And uh, also thanks for the fund fundings from SFC. And uh, the conclusion is that the interface in concrete is, uh, you know, should be targeted. I think there are a lot of opportunities here. Thank you.